some of the pictures from the eclipse have been totally amazing and I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about the eclipse as a phenomenon in how it relates to free will. That might sound absolutely ridiculous and if you're skeptical you, you should be um, but let's walk through it, let's break it down um, and how to get there involves uh, the concept of emergence. So uh, I know it's been a while since we made a video but let's get started. In Okay, first thing, um, videos, uh, I mentioned in the launch that I want to do video essays, but also the vlogs. This, These vlog episodes are all going to be numbered at the top, and the video essay type things are going to not be numbered, so just a visual distinguisher. They probably will also say vlog or not say vlog on it, so that'll give it away if the numbering system doesn't. I wanted to talk about a ridiculous question as a way to get at the concept of free will. Um, uh, you can imagine a really annoying philosophy major um, who is like understanding science for the first time and is like, oh my gosh, water doesn't exist. I believe that water does not exist because what I know is what really exists is hydrogen and oxygen and another hydrogen. And ultimately what water is, is just oxygen and hydrogen and another hydrogen. And so rivers don't flow. Flow doesn't exist. It's really just collisions of these electronegative, you know, oxygens that are polarized and colliding into other things and interacting with the Coulombs. Well, there's no such thing as flow. It's really just collisions. Um, and I, I found this argument really compelling for a little while. Like, oh, complicated objects don't really exist. What really is there is um, the, the, the matter that makes it up. You can, of course, go infinitely far down the rabbit hole and say oxygen doesn't really exist. It's really protons and neutrons and electrons. And protons don't really exist. It's really an up quark and an up quark and a down quark and gluons that bind them together. There's really no thing underneath it all. Ultimately, this view uh, that things don't exist um, what exists is really the stuff underneath that makes it up is called reductionism. And reductionism is the belief that everything really ultimately is determined by, is, and is caused by fully and completely um, its constituent parts. If we take a reductionist view of the universe, sloppy, we can say um, the eclipse doesn't exist because really what happened was there were photons that were moving um, and those photons collided with the electrons in the atoms on the moon, uh, which itself isn't really a real thing. It's really just um, a bunch of other atoms that are made of quarks and etc. Um, and so the eclipse isn't real because uh, uh, it's just the photons, the light, the atoms, etc. Now, if you're sitting here thinking and you're like, oh my God, this is stupid at this point. I'm clicking away. This guy's trying to tell me that eclipse, the eclipse didn't exist. I saw it with my own eyes. Then that's exactly where I want you to be. Because this is like, this is the argument against reductionism that it's pretty, it's pretty hand, it's a, uh, it's it, call me naive. But if you're going to sit here and tell me like rivers don't flow, I don't, you did something wrong in your argument. Like something must be wrong with your reasoning if you think that that's true. So, so um, reductionism itself could have things that are valid about it. And, and, and we'll talk about that in a second. But the concept that macroscopic objects somehow don't exist, no, reject that, don't accept that. Examples of that, um, like color, slipperiness, um, music, right? These are these are uh, in, interpersonal relationships, like something like um, uh, anger is an emergent, property. Um, anger, you could say, is neurons, right? But it, it comes about because you have two objects, like a human and another human, um, or a human and like a keyboard that doesn't work. Uh, and there's an interaction there, and there's chemicals. And you can say, oh, a reductionist view is that anger doesn't exist because it reduces down to these other things. That's what really is there, and the anger is somehow illusory. I say no. I felt anger. I know that it's real. The eclipse exists. Water exists. Anger exists. Sorry, reductionism. Something is there. Okay. Now, if we take all those points, we say um, we, we know for a fact that emergence is the real way that the universe works. Um, properties come to exist in complex systems that don't exist in their constituent parts. Like electrons don't know how to be angry. Um, water doesn't know. It's a single water molecule itself does not know how to like be in turbulent flow or laminar flow. Like those kinds of flow come about because you have smaller things interacting. DNA is useless unless it's inside a cell with all the other complex machinery that like makes the DNA do stuff. So um, firmly, I believe in emergence uh, and for now. And um, 
what does that have to do with free will? Now, I can't draw the entire picture. Um, List and Menzies and Janan Ismail and a bunch of people, there's actually a huge, uh, and Hillary Putnam, I just found out, a huge literature of people that are thinking about this in much more detail than we can go into here or that I've had time to comprehend. Um, but uh, what 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 the um, what the reductionists do have going for them is the concept that uh, sure maybe this whole wordplay that we're having about the existence of the eclipse is the wrong wordplay and I, I would imagine a reductionist would say that to me they would say that's not my point I'm not trying to say that like you don't exist that's wrong what I'm trying to say in reduction is that is that the the, the components the atoms those determine what occurs. On the larger level the microscopic components determine what happens on the macroscopic level and it's at that point that the reductionist really has a point that might be hard to say like you're you're not gonna say um that the that like the flow of water causes the motion of molecules it's the molecules moving that create the flow of water so the reductionist has a point when they say ah actually you can't say that it's i'm not trying to say that things don't exist what i'm trying to say is that um the uh the baser the smaller components those build up and those create the larger components i'm on board with that idea and i wanted to name that as the problem that ultimately is what it comes down to so um, mincing words a little bit here, uh, I, I'm, I'm stopping because I, I don't want to like go into the entire thing. We can do that. We can do that later. Um, but the, but the concept that's at stake is imagine that the eclipse itself caused something to change within itself. Like the eclipse had agency. That doesn't make any sense. Like if you think that the eclipse, like the fact that it would make a cool shadow is why the moon moved in front of the sun then you're that's ridiculous that doesn't make any sense at all you can't say that the the, the eclipse the concept of the eclipse the larger object the macroscopic object the currents of the, the eclipse somehow caused the moon to like change direction and it's at that point where you see ah the reductionist really does have a point um this video is getting a little too long so we're gonna cut it down um if you're interested in how you could maybe talk about the macroscopic object causing things to change on the uh, microscopic level. Look into List and Menzies, look into John Ismael, Janan Ismail and Hilary Putnam. Um, that top-down causality is something that ultimately we don't, we don't have a good solution to that. that argue, those arguments are still occurring. Summary, uh, free will seems to be the larger entity, i.e. me, causing changes in the components of me my atoms and my molecules it seems to be ridiculous to say that that occurs because it doesn't make sense to say like the eclipse caused the motion of the moon to uh change so there's a ridiculous thing number one in the emergence camp but then there's also a ridiculous thing in the reductionist camp which is you can't say because that exists because that because we agree that top-down causality might be iffy you can't say that that means that rivers somehow don't exist that eclipses somehow don't exist that somehow my mind doesn't exist um so we've got two ridiculous things hopefully we've learned something about reductionism and emergentism uh thanks for watching have a good night